How's everybody feeling this morning? Good, good. We got a good one on deck. Nice to see y'all. We're gonna come into these bodies, into our muscles, got some lunging and some ball work, and we're gonna get these bodies. So, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm sure Heidi's there or she'll be here soon. Um, we're cooking. Yeah, you guys see me okay? Find your feet. Stretch that plantar fascia, rock into your toes a little bit. Feel those heels hitting down. We'll do some more of that pretty soon. Get them nice and square. They feel a little bit pigeon toed, shoulder width, so you can feel that chi flow from the earth. Plug it right in <clears throat> and take a deep breath. Exhale into the earth, all the way down to the center point of the earth from, from that very deep place. Breathe it up your legs, up your pelvis, and Squeeze your backside and stretch your front side. Open things up a little bit like that. That's your anterior chain stretching and your posterior stretching and then switch them out with a big graceful bow around it. <sighs> Exhale it, pull your navel, your spine. Stretch through that back musculature. Mm, let's do that again. Let it easily flow backwards. Lunge you ladies, squeeze a little harder in the butt cheeks and between the shoulder blades and push your navel out and stretch the abs and then let that roll back through and feel your shoulders come up over your ribcage towards your ears. Tuck your pelvis around your spine, exhale. And then bring it back, let it come right back to natural neutral, shoulders, hips and ears, knees lined up and Squeeze your abs, push back into that posterior chain, and hinge it down. Oh, I forgot that stretch. God dang it. Let's go back up. Sorry about that. From here, we want to go up here. Open up here. Get one more good stretch. Reach into the corners of the universe. Give it an ah. And then let that come back up to the natural stack. Perfectly balanced hands overhead, and let them swing into... The master's exercise, little baby mini squats, hinging back, feel the weight come through the heels, turning on the legs and joints just as easy and effortlessly as possible, letting the shoulders swing all the way around, gazing straight ahead, easy breathing, automatic breathing, plenty of breathing. Let them zing. Knees are over the toes, spines aligned and tall, hinging a little bit at the hips. Breathing. We'll count them down and go into the chair pose. Six, five, four, and three, and two, and one. I forgot something else too, didn't I? Oh, well, I can't get them all. Hinge back into that. <clears throat> Lengthen through the spine, reach for the sky, squeeze your back muscles tight and your neck tall, and then soften them up. Slowly sinking. Breathing through your whole joints and bones and cells, opening them up. Effortless energy. This is allowed to get intense. If you keep sinking, we got another half a minute. Ooh, use as little effort as you can and still let it get intense. Make small adjustments in your shoulders and your head and your feet. Let it get long and strong. Keep it cooking for seven, six. Five, four, get a little longer. Three, two, and one. Push down to come up and then come down nice and easy. Very nice. All right, let's turn on the upper back shoulder yoke with some scap circles. Scap circles, I'm gonna take my shirt off for this. Scapular circles, we're gonna move our shoulder blades and our shoulder points in as big a circle as we can forward first. And we'll do it two different ways. Get those circles going, great big circles, pretty stiff arms straight ahead, and chase them a little bit with your spine, your head, your thoracic. But really feel the shoulder blades moving on the rib cage. 
Now keep it going, but squeeze your abs and get really tall through the spine. Squeeze your glutes and your abs and your chin back, but still move as big a circles as you can. For three, breathe in with them, and two, and one. Now take them backwards, open them up, and get loose again. Follow them with your spine and your rib cage and your face. Ride them back, making huge circles with this pencil that comes out the shoulder right there. Nice and wide, a little bit wider, pointing for the corners of the room. And now once again, lock them down. Squeeze the abs, squeeze your butt, squeeze your chin back. Pinch those shoulder blades all the way together. And then reach them way for the corners of the room for four more. And three more. And two more. And one more and let them drop and swing very, very nice. That gets that whole complex warmed up. Pull it across, stretch that shoulder and all the way around across the scapula of the spine. Three, two, one. Switch that one out, catch the other one. Drop it down. Bring your awareness into your shoulder blades, where they are, what they're doing. Stretch that trap and everything. Three, two, one, super good. All right, we're gonna do some easy squats, standard ones with the so let's go a little bit wider shoulder width than shoulder width, and we'll mix that up when we go into the side steps. Let's get about 10 star squats. Pull your head back into your shoulders. Make sure you start every squat with that push back hinge. It's a hinge and then a squat. Get right down into that fashion near the end ranges of those joints and bounce it back up. Super easy. Hips are going back, hips are going forward. Big tall spine, big long neutral spine. I bet there's about four to go. And then we'll blast these hands out of there and kick in some side steps. Here's the last one. And let them out. And then we're sidestepping for about 10, 10 more. Kick in that lateral squat component. Hit yourself, hit your spot right in the middle when you're down, then go to the side. Don't telegraph it. Squat right central, go a little wider. See what that feels like. Knees go out over those toes, four, and pop it to the side. Pop this side to go here, pop this side to go here, and two, and two, and one, and one. Super good. All right, so for that, we just let the leg muscles do what they need to do to move us. They're very capable of that. They've got more strength than that. We're going to do very technical lunges. We'll do about 10 on each leg. It's not really a lunge, it's almost a one-legged squat. We're gonna turn on all the muscles consciously as we go through each extra one. So get yourself nice and square, shoulder width, not too deep back, probably less deep back than usual. And load in, grab the earth with that foot, feel the foot muscles and the shin muscles and the calf muscles turn on. And the first two muscles we're gonna watch as we go down are the quad and the glute. The glute comes all the way up here, squeeze it nice and tight. Once you got that on, Push yourself that way a little bit and come into that abductor. Turn that on. Well, we're gonna get more than 10 of these if I don't slow down. Once that's on, creep it around into the hamstring. Turn on the hamstring, the quad, the glute, the abductor. Now squeeze the adductor too and make them all crazy tight. Way stronger and more flex than they need for your very slight weight. And after two more, we're gonna bring that up into a stork. This leg's so full of power. I just drive it down into the earth. Stork this up, pull the abs in, squeeze the glute, eyes ahead. Rock solid, like a stork fence post. Awesome. Now squeeze that, shake that out. That should have lots of blood and lactic acid in it. Give it a little <laughs> Bring some fresh breath and nourishment into it. And let's set up the other one. Same sequence. Set it up. Notice I've got a wide stance, little internal rotation, so I can push into that abductor, but first, Quads and the glutes, bring them down. Turn those bad boys on more than they need to be. I forgot the shins, but it's not too late. Turn those guys on, get them gripping or lifting. And now hit the abductor. Push into that. You got three quarters of your leg really fired up. Once we go to the hamstring, hamstring, glute, abductor, and get the adductor too. Squeeze it up, oh, crazy tight. Drill it right into the earth, grab it like an orangutan. Two. Super strong leg muscles, push it down to come up. Bring it up with complete control and surplus power in your legs and hips. And shake that one out also. Because it's got gush and worked out quite well. Excellent. Let's do some hip circles. 
I'm going to sink into my stronger foot. We're going to do the weird one first. We take it big and wide out across the center line about six times. Open it out. We're using abs, hip flexors. Open this hip up when it's back. Two. And now the other direction this feels better. Up and around. Drop it back. Up and around. Really cross that center line. Pivoting the hip once again. Squeezing this glute to keep stable. And five. And six. Super big circles. Park it down with as much control as you can. Sink into this one. Take this one out and in. See how that's looking. Very nice. The more stable I can stand on this one, the more control I have over this one. Five and six. I'm going to change directions, bring it out. Feel that whole hip joint, that amazing articular action of that hip, able to do that whole range of motion. Squeeze the abs up, open it out. Whoa, two to go. Let's make it two. And ease it down, completely controlled, super good. Hips are loosey-goosey. Let's uh, firm them up. Let's do some offset squats. It's a stagger step squat. We're gonna do my classic four, 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 where we do um, four of them. I got time to show it off, give you the demo. So it's an offset squat, which is more like a one-legged squat. Left foot at first is gonna take all the weight. We'll do four of them with this foot light here, four of them with that foot light there, Form with that foot light there, and form them over in a curtsy, and then we'll switch legs. It's pretty amazing stuff. Load that up, put that foot in the instep. Here we go for four. Always pushing back into that posterior chain, loading that hip. Two, and one. I'm gonna put my heel lightly on my toe. That's the hardest one to get back into that posterior chain back there, but I can do it. Working my balance. I think that's three and four. This one's hard, but a little easier. Push back into that. Really feel that whole magic posterior chain doing its thing. Two and one, and the curtsy is super good for those juice, juicy joints. Four, be funky with your hands and your breath. And two and one, super good. Shake that out a little bit. We're gonna do an inchworm down into some plank work. So, and then we'll come back out of that. Get about shoulder width, maybe a little bit wider. Practice that hinge that we missed at the beginning. Feel those hammies on, long spine. Hinge down as low as you can, and then you're allowed to bend your knees. When you reach to the floor, reach out in front of you. Get your shoulders activated out there. Turn on the serratus. Walk it out. Got a kind of a down dog pause. And let's arrive. When we arrive in the plank, the glutes are tight, the navel drawn in, the shoulders are just right, the chin is back. Squeeze those abs for three, two, one. Now pike up into a down dog. Drive it up high. Push your shoulders up into your ears. Stretch your tailbone to the sky. Lengthen and drop your heels to the floor. Feel free to wiggle a little bit. Get one and the other. And now let's melt this down using the abs to control the descent. Back to the arrived at plank. With the glutes tight and the abs on, rock solid. I'm gonna stay here for a little while. And with the glutes really turned on, everything on, let's lift that left leg, not very high. Turn both legs on, keep that there. Level pelvis for six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring it on down. Transfer the weight, lift the other one. Lengthen through that hip flexor. Exhale, squeeze some muscles a little extra. Feel how strong and rigid you are. A child could walk on your back. Three, two, one, put it down. Let's pike it up again. Drive it apart. <laughs> Breathe into that. Arch the back, lengthen, stretch the whole posterior chain. There's that word again. And then melt it down using the abs. Arrive at that plank and let's hold this one. For seven, six. And play with it a little bit. Fire different muscles. Move your shoulders a little bit. Check your head. Three, two, one. And I'm gonna push up. Not into a full down dog, but start up and then walk it back. Walk it back. Drop into your heels when you can. Come down into a seed pod. Let it hug down, made small. And once you're right over those feet, 
Take a breath in and push down through the feet. The butt comes up first. You're gonna unroll your spine one vertebrae at a time, like a sprout pushing up through the soil. The head's gonna come up last. Feel my spine come out of curled flexion into tall balance neutrality. Shoulders drop back, gaze goes ahead, fix my shirt. I feel all tall and ready to go, super good. Let's get the sticks and do some hinging. Because hinging is such my favorite thing. We'll do the standard um, good mornings in the wide leg, good mornings and bell and bends. Actually, let's get a little shoulders first. Take this out. We're gonna be working the shoulders today. Nice and carefully, pop it up, stiff arms. If you wanna pop your ribs the first time to get it over, do it. Be careful as it goes through that zone. And bring it back, get four more of those. Now, ideally, we won't pop the ribs, but that's okay. Keep that head tall. Big, wide shoulders, up and tall. Scaps come together. Bring it back down, one more of those. And then my feet are fairly close together for this first set. Stop at the top of your head, put it back here where it's gonna help keep your shoulders back. Big open chest, neutral spine. Push your butt back into that rubber wall posterior chain. Let's get about six of these. Long neutral spine, including the neck looking down as you're hinging down. Three, let's stay down and pulse, very small pulses on the next one. Stay down there, get long, get in your hand, you six. Five, breathe in, four, three, abs are on, shoulders are back, bring it up and down one more time, boing, and boing, and drop it across your shoulder yoke, turn, you don't have to turn, set your feet nice and wide, let's get six, big wide ones, same move, I'm still pushing back into those, the posterior chain, this stick really helps me keep my spine long and strong, abs are engaged, Sway back, really feel that first move as your butt going back, loading those hamstrings. Three, we gotta pulse this one, ready? Stay down, little pulses, four, three, two, one, up and down twice more, and we're gonna stay down for the rotations, sometimes known as Bill and Ben's. Here we go, I'm gonna keep my skull aimed right at you, long neutral spine, look left. Three, and right, two, Three, we'll do four of those. Left, two, three, and right, two, three, and left, two, three, right, three, three. Let's hold this one longer. Take it over for four, three, two, one. Switch it out, put it down for four, three, two, one. One, get back in the middle, nice and sagittal, up and down three more times. Just letting it happen by the magic of your fascial springiness. And walk it back in. Posterior chain is on, check. What else do we want to do? Let's, um, let's work the anterior chamber of the shin. So we're gonna have to hit this pretty hard. Gotta go to a wall and lean back against that wall. You've been doing this a little bit so I can get my butt off the wall, <clears throat> nice and neutral. I'm gonna raise the shins and try to use those muscles in the front of the legs. I like two syllables, raise the toes and then the feet. And we're gonna put them both down. So it's toes up, feet up, feet down, toes down. We'll do a bunch of these because it takes a while to get those muscles burning. So you wanna really squeeze the front of your shins at the top, see if you get all the muscles 100% contracting on the front and add the breathing if you haven't already. Exhale, as you contract them, inhale back into them. Exhale, so you feel that right up to the base of your knee. Six more of those. Make it nice and straight through the body. Five, inhale, exhale, four. Get the outside of the shins, raise your pinky toes. Three, and two. And one, super duper good. Three, two, one, let it down, that's great. All right, we're gonna stretch those out and then do the calf raises. So, so we're gonna do the toe drag stretch. We're gonna put that foot back and um, aim the knee and the leg sagittally right at the wall. I'm gonna try to drag the big toe bone and feel it stretch from the big toe tarsal up that shin. 
And as I drag it in, it feels really, really good. And then after you've got a few inches, internally rotate it to move that stretch across all the other toe tarsals and up the lateral aspect of that shin. Rise tall through your hip and head. Drag that along the mat. Feel how yummy that feels. Breathe into it. We almost never work those. We almost never stretch them. Roll it around. That feels amazing. Set up the other one straight at the wall, sagittally. Get that big toe. It's, big toe feels pretty good. It's not as pleasant as the others. I might get a foot cramp that prevents me from doing it. Oh, I got it. I'm gonna roll it in, see if I can lose that. Oh, it's pretty intense, but I got it. Dragging the toes, the shin, raising the hip, raising through my head, dragging, 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 stretching, stretching, stretching. And that's all I got on that one. How about you? Wiggle them around. You got that, Dave? Is that working? All right. Let's get the calf raises. Let's do these against the wall also because I can come back here and get a good flexion in that ankle. Don't get too far away. You got to be able to push in. Long neutral spine, chin tucked. Take them up and down, squeezing the entire calf muscle. Try to set that bend just right so you get the gastrocnemius and the soleus. Squeeze them and exhale. Inhale and stretch them. Ha! Squeeze them up. Let's get about 10 more of those. It takes calves a while to burn because they're amazing caveman muscles that will walk 40,000 steps today if you ask them. Squeeze them up. Inhale them down. Four. And three. Really make them long at the bottom. And two. Let's hold the last one for four seconds. Squeeze it tight. Exhale. Four, three, two, one and bring it down. First a gentle jiggy joggy stretch, walking the dog, and then let's pick one to stay back and stretch hard. Lean deep into that stiff leg, get that gastrocnemius. Exhale four times, three more times. Fix your head and neck, look at the wall. Two, really push it, bend it, three. That's so good, and switch them out. Take your time setting it up. We'll give it a long four breaths count. Sit into it, straight leg. Ooh. Fix your head and neck and push your push into that wall. Stretch it hard. Second to last exhale. So in this last one, bend the knee a little bit and bring it into that lower soleus along with the gastroc. So good. All right, take them out and roll them around. I've been bumping you guys up in this Monday, Wednesday, Friday group by doing the world's greatest stretch. Most of you have seen it. I hope you love it even half as much as me. You can do this on the chair if you like. It starts on the plank. Soccer players and professional teams do it on the floor. I like to get on a yoga block. I do it on the floor sometimes. But it starts with a big plank. And this is Adam's vibrant version of it. You'll be on the chair is absolutely fine. It's three parts. The first part is five big mountain climbers to each side. These are brief step mobility drills. Where I'm sitting right into that hip, into that heel, raise through the spine, pushing back into a partial pike. I got three, three. Get your breathing going with it. Let it be funkified by your breath and your freedom of movement. There's four, four. Feel the end range of those joints. There's Five, and five. Here comes part number two, and it's a juicy one. Post that foot up by the hand. Get long and strong from the heel to the top of the head. Thoracic rotation, take this knee side elbow, go down the instep of that knee, and then inhale as you look up, perfectly perpendicular, and bring it back down. Take it deep, push it down there. Reach up high, what all do you feel stretching there? Oh, almost everything, coach. Exhale it down. There's my third one. I'll dink it, dink it, dink it. And I'm going to hold it up top for about three. Two, really reach it, stretch it, unwind that thoracic, and bring it down. We're going to go to the posterior chain stretch now, which is a two-part breathing move. Part A is big extension through the spine and the hip. Part B is rounding, flexing the hip and the back, exhaling. Inhale here, we do five of these. Inhale here, 
Raise this toe, push that knee back, stretch the ham and feel that stretch all the way around your body. Bring it back down, that's three already. Drive it again, exhale, four, a little bit slower. And we're gonna hold five for like two breaths or so. So push it up, feel that whole continuous butt beef band from the back of your knee to the nape of your neck, round it out. Another exhale, breathe it, move it a little bit. And that gets us ready for the final part, which is a lunge hip flexor stretch. Bring that back leg up a little bit. Set your base of support, drive down through the heel, reach for the sky, square up your hips, play with that hip flexor back there. Little baby dips, check that you can control your pelvis angle. You can bend sideways a little and rotate to really get that thing for two more exhales. And, and let's come back down to that block or the floor or the chair. Set up the other one for part two, thoracic rotation. Long from the top of my head to my heel. Elbow down the inseam. Inhale it up. Exhale it down. Reach it. Feel it where you feel it. Different people feel it different places. Rotate that rib cage. Exhale it down. It's two, I got one to go. Reach it up, hold, two, three, bring it on down, and set up your PCS. Part A, so reach tall through your head. Part B, round through your back, straighten that knee. Inhale through your whole body here. Exhale it up through, round it out. I got three of those, they're feeling mighty juicy. I got four. This stretch changed my life and my relationship with my back. Drive it again, second to last. Inhale into it. This really can get you to know your posterior chain. Hold this one for two big breaths. Push into it, play with it. Find the different warding lines. And then find your base of support. Bring that up, drill down through the front leg, drive up into that overhead. You can reach for the sky, you can fold it over your head, get some more triceps, lat, ribs, intercostals, obliques, hip flexor, quad. It's amazing. Two more exhales, sniff it. Really good stuff. All right, march it out. I think we're ready for business. We're gonna do a funky lunge, hinge, arms exercise. It's got, this first round is three exercises, lunge, pull, hinge. And of course, they're gonna have vibrant variations. Grab some pretty chunky bells. I'm gonna be using 12s. Um, if you want your 10s or your 8s or your 7s, you can even do it with 5s, it's just fine. Get this timer fired up. Uh oh, <laughs> we got a technical difficulty here. I don't have the timer. That's all right, I have the timer installed in my head. I might even make the noises that you guys know. Keep an eye on the clock, maybe I can see it like that. We're gonna do about a minute of these. <clears throat> and um, it goes like this, you're gonna stand shoulder width, curl these up, good strong biceps curl, inhale them down. Now every time they come down, this first round, as they come down, I'm gonna drop back into that lunge, long lunge hinge, I'm gonna kick back at triceps, I'm gonna bring it back up, and then kick the other side out. Bing, we're on the clock. We're doing half a minute of these. We'll vary them next time. Feel that whole amazing motion. So you can pull yourself forward through that hip heel. Squeeze those biceps. Inhale it here probably. Exhale it here. See what feels right to you. Long spine, long body. Reaching it back. Pulling it forward, squeezing the biceps. To the other side, lose it a little if you must. Keep them cooking, we're halfway there. Draw it up. Next time we do this, we'll stop at each end and do four curls and then four triceps kickbacks. Squeeze them up. Four and three and two and one. When you bring them up, squeeze those biceps nice and tight. Three, two, one. Melt them down. Let them hang and stretch out. Super good. We're gonna go hinge, 
face pulls. I don't have the face pull bag. Let's do hinged W's. You can use very small weights or no weights at all. We're gonna hinge down and do W's, which is a lot like we do with a face pull bag. We pull those back. So we're getting little tiny bells. Get yourself ready. When we hinge, we're definitely always pushing back into that chain. Bring it right down here. So it starts like a row with the palms down and it comes up behind my ears like this. This one betrays my soft left shoulder, but that's what it's about. Shoulder control, scapular retraction. Mm, beautiful hinge, palm right back. Super good. Pinch them back. Pinch them back. We're halfway there. Stand up out of your hinge. I've been doing those palms forward. Now I'm going to do them thumbs back. Set it up again. Push back into that hinge. Bring them up. Thumbs to the sky. Right up like that. Squeeze the middle of your back when they're up. Lengthen through the spine. Looking straight down. We've got four to go. Squeeze them back there. Let's pulse this one at the top. Three, 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 two to go. Second to last, and lasty last. And hinge them back up. Give those a break. Shake them around, around, and around. And let's get the stick again. We're gonna do an offset deadlift with the stick being used as our neutral spine indicator. I love this posture here because it gets this arm back, works this shoulder mobility. My thumb is right between my spine and the stick, which is about a neutral spine. Head stays on the spine, and you're gonna use that to feel how neutral you are. We're gonna offset it, so do one regular one, ready, bang! Push back into that. Now step the right leg in front of the left, and push back into that. You're really getting one hamstring more than the other. Hard to bend my knees here. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do, I wanted to offset. Take that back out across, offset it. That felt too hard, we'll do that one last. There it is, so now my right leg's light, my left leg's loaded. Working that left side posterior chain for two more. Push it back, how's your head? And last one on that side. Switch them out, switch your offset, drop it back a little bit, and hit it again. Hinge it down, throw your butt back. Eyes ahead when I'm up, eyes down when I'm down. We got five to go. Take your time with them. How much can you load that hamstring with no weights at all? Just by body mechanics and perfect hinging. Three and two and one. Awesome. And that's the end of that one. We're going back to lunges. Get your very same bells. Lunge kickbacks. Stand up triceps. Um, and we're gonna do four at each, each station. So let's get ready here. Here comes the ding. Let's do four curls. Four. Bring them down. Exhale them up. Breathe out of your biceps. Two and one. You know what? We're gonna do three, three. So let's get three of these. Three. Got to kick back. Two and one. I'm bringing my left leg up for the curls, which is three. I'm gonna kick the right leg back after this last one. Exhale, kick the right leg back. Kick those triceps back. The elbows stay stuck to my ribs. I'm locking them out, making them burn. Come up tall, squeeze it here for four of these. Three of these, I'm sorry. One, and two. Now watch this one when we go down. You wanna really keep those elbows stuck to your rib cage. So I'm really just working that triceps, elbow joint, shoulders back. Let's get two more, two. And one, bring them up, four, and three, and two, and one, ease them down. Don't worry, we'll be back for more. We're gonna hinge and row with these same heavy belts. You don't even get to put them down. It's kind of brutal endurance building for your grippers. <clears throat> get ready, steady, we're gonna hinge down. We're gonna do four low rows, and then four high rows, bang! Hinge it down, here we go. Elbows close to the body, stopping them right at the plane of the back. Exhale them up, squeeze those muscles, inhale into them. Squeeze them, there's my low row. Let's do one more of those. Ha! Now I'm gonna go high row, turn those bellows out. Ooh. Squeeze them good. Three, long skull looking down. Two, 
And one, finish them out at the middle row. That's 45 degrees, still hinged down. If you want to come up, you may. Back down, make sure you're back in that posterior chain. And now really breathe into that. Exhale. And exhale. Breathe into the muscles. Four. And then three. Inhale here. Exhale here. Two. And one. Ease them down. Hinge it back up. <clears throat> Super fantastic. Put them down. Let's get the stick again. This is kind of advanced. It's a lunged hinge with a stick, and I do want the um, stick on here again if you can do it. <clears throat> if you can turn sideways, I can see how it's going for you. So I set this up, I drop into a short lunge, and I drop a little ways, only as far as I want. I'm gonna stay at that elevation as I hinge forward and back. Try to keep that glute really, that hips really steady, and really feel this front leg glute doing that amazing hinge work. See if you can feel that stick on your head, your shoulders, your sacrum. Four. Really lean into it. Marvelous body mechanics on this. Two. And switch them out. Bring that up. I'm switching hands. Put it the other way. A little wider than shoulder width, maybe. Hinge it. Boom. And boom. I love this stick because it reminds me of the straightness of the spine, which isn't really straight, but it needs to be neutral like that to be safe and deliver power to the other parts of your body. Really find that glute right there. Use that glute to bring you up for three, two, and one. Super good. And I have no idea how I'm doing on that one minute timer, but it feels pretty good. Uh, what do we do now? Top of the order. We're going to do the 4-4 four, four again. 3-3 three, three again. Very same thing. And um, we're going to stork on the biceps curls. All right? So let's start with a lunge on this one. Get them all set. We're going to drop one back and kick them back three times. Three. Really strong on that front leg. Two. Now I'm going to drive down through that leg. Come up on one if I've got it and do my three curls here. Tight glutes. Tight abs. Eyes on the floor for balance out there. I let this down and I drop the other one back. And here we go for three of these. Three, and two, and one. Draw yourself forward through that front leg. Curl these up, three. Still hit the biceps. If you gotta touch that for balance, it's fine. Just a reference touch goes a long way. I got one more. I'm gonna put this down and drop that standing leg back. It's now the back leg. One more each side. Squeeze those back. Two. And one. Pull yourself forward for three. And two. And one. Put that one down. Drop the other one back. Last one. Three. And two. Got those biceps squeezing. One. Drive it up. Four. Three. Ooh, if you don't can't hold that, that's fine. Two. And one, super good. Once again, we keep the heavy bells. This is kind of brutal. Loosen them up. We're gonna do shrugs, not too many, and then stretch the neck. So get that shoulder lined up with the ear, spine nice and neutral, and exhale as we shrug them up pretty hard. Bring them up. Inhale and down. We feel the stretch up, and then way down. One more, and then stay down. Now move them back two centimeters. Do four more. Get them long. Two and one. Very good. Now let them hang. Let's actually get one more of those. Squeeze them up good and tight for three. Squeeze them. Three, two, one. Now let them go. Let them go. Keep your fingers gripping, but everything else goes soft. Lengthen your neck, and then put a bend on it. Exhale three times. Feel that dumbbell stretching your right side of your neck, your traps. If you look up, your sternocleidomastoid. If you look down, your levator scapulae and all those buddies. And then look straight ahead, get the skyline for one more exhale. And then bring it up. Check on that a little bit, drop the other one down. That's a pretty intense stretch. Exhale onto that twice. And look up. If 
through the front of the neck, drop that shoulder back a little bit, and then look down, drop that shoulder forward a little bit, exhale, come back to flat, straight ahead, bending that one more exhale, and bring them up, and park the bells down, and roll them around. That's a lot of work on those traps that don't get worked like that much. And let's get our stick again for a very special hinge called the crossover ITB hinge. So now we get to relax with that vertical stick, put this here across our body, settle into a shoulder yoke on the traps, kind of low. We're going to do another sort of one-legged deadlift. I want to cross my right leg over my left, push that butt back, load that left hamstring. Just two of them sagittally like this. And now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm pushing my butt that way and my head that way. I'm going to feel the outside of that hip. That's my glute, my ITB. Pushing into that to stretch it. Go kind of slow. Really feel the angle that you want for that hip to be happy and that side of your hip to stretch like you've probably never done it before. Two more of those. <clears throat> Push it back. Stretch it long. Adjust your torso to really get it in there. Feel that Glute medius bring you back up. Oh, that's juicy. Give it a break. Shave, switch them over to sagittal. So sagittal is like very effective hamstring. It gets one hamstring more than the other. And now when I skew it, push my butt that way and my head that way, I'm still using hamstring, but by golly, I got a lot of lateral muscles in there. And it's so good to give your lateral muscles some attention. Those sideline muscles. Make it super juicy for four more. Take your time. Feel both the stretch and the power coming back up. Two. Let's do two more. This is a vibrant fitness too. Two. And long head, neutral spine. Go slow. Stay down there. Push into that. That's my hip flexor. No, that's my glute medius. Three, two, one. And shake them out. That's pretty amazing. That's the first round of three. Take a breather. Get a sip, shake your muscles out, breathe some big exhales. We'll be back with three more in 45 seconds or so. Legs are getting shorter. All right, if you can uh, hit your mute. Somebody should be muted. I'll see if I can mute you. I hate to silence anybody. It's going to be accused of censorship. Uh, all right, we got more on the docket. There's going to be a lot of uh, ball work on here, so get your ball ready. We're going to do some funky squats into some ball work, ball sit and uh, ball ch <coughs> chest. Covert core work coming down. I love this one. Let me get a little sip. And let's see. Oh, it looks like I might get my timer if you give me another 27 seconds. My timer's on this iPhone 3, which is probably worth money as a collector's item. And it doesn't hold a charge very long. But it's the only OS that will hold the timer app that I like. It's hard to find a good timer app, even though there's millions of them out there. We might have to start without the timer. I could talk a little bit more. We're doing okay on time. Yeah, that's not ready. It's slow and tired. All right, grab one light dumbbell. And I'm going to use a seven today, so I should say a medium dumbbell. And we're going to do an offset squat, much like we did at the beginning. And I'm going to raise this dumbbell as I do, because as some of you know, when I raise a dumbbell as I squat, it loads that posterior chain much more consciously and effectively. And we're going to do the same dance with the foot as we do that. And we're going to feel different aspects of that posterior chain working as we do it. And we're in business. We got the old-fashioned vibrant timer coming up. So feet in squat stance and load into the left. The bell's in the left. Actually, no, let's put the bell in the offside, contralateral. Light on the bell side. And let's push back into that for um, three straight back and four straight back. It's a squat and a raise. Four and three. And two, and one. Now I'm going heel on my toe. 
I can push this out to the side, change the warding line, take it in front of me. Ooh, that challenges the balance. Two and one, swing it around toe to heel. Four and three and two and one. So, oh, no time for the curtsy. We'll get on the next one, switch them out. Let's go three and two and one heel on toe for three and two. Keep your spine long. Go toe to heel now. Load that standing leg. Three and two and one. We get the curtsy for a couple here. Slowly loading that outside. Throw that bell around and let it go. Super good. All right, we're gonna sit on the ball with chunky bell and we're gonna curl them. But we're going to covertly work the core while we do it by working with one leggers. So I got to get tall on that ball, solid and centered. Feet fairly close together. Both feet down, try one curl. Let them down. Now for the next four, raise your right leg when you curl. Abs tight, spine tall. <sighs> Squeezing those biceps at the top. Two. We're going to switch legs after this one. Slight shift of weight. Subtle core muscles firing all over the place to keep us upright and sturdy. Two. Uh, let's go to two, two. I'm gonna go two rights. I'm gonna kick them out like a can can. Two. Uh, one, get the other one. And two. Now you can stay with the two, two rhythm. We can try one, one rhythm. Next time we do this, we're gonna go overhead. Think of what bells you might want for that. I should probably get lighter ones today. And two, switch them out, stay tall through that spine. One, and I'm switching them all up. That works just fine. And then you're gonna stay right on the ball. When it buzzes, breathe a few times. We're gonna walk this right out into the dumbbell ball chest, which we love so much. We'll start with chest presses. I'll walk this out. So my head is just supported. Squeeze those glutes up high, knock the bells together, find the balance point. Load them down on vertical forearms into the pecs. Feel the pecs exhaling them back up. Now these are friendly bells for the chest. So if you feel like you've got your shoulders good, glutes on, pecs firing, open them out into flies. The palms face each other, squeeze the pecs at the top, open them out. Squeeze them from the bottom all the way to the top. Don't forget to contract them at the top 100%. Open it out, exhale them up, squeeze all the juice out of them. Keep perfecting it. Are your hips up? Are you breathing out at the top? Into the muscles as they come down? Are you contracting the entire pectoralis majors and their buddies? Squeezing them up. Don't worry, we'll have another chance to perfect this one. Always amazing, it's everybody's favorite. That's my chest, that's my backs. And stretch them out, crush them one more time. Oh, super good. We're at the top of the order. Same offset squat move, only we're holding two bells this time. Gonna hold two dumbbells, same size if you like them. I like them pretty good. Same offset, three, 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 so we can get some curtsies in. Here we go. Oh, I'm gonna make it. I got this one light. I'm out into my offset squat. Staggered squat. Two and three. That ball wants to play. Heel on toe. Three and two. And toe to heel. Bring them down, squat them deep. Three. All in that front heel. All in that front posterior chain. Front posterior chain. That's good. Curtsy it. We'll get one or two. One and Two, switch them out, side it all. Three, and two, and one, heel on toe. That's the weird one, three. Raising those shoulders, lengthening that spine. Going toe to heel, this is getting cooking. Three, and two, and one. Let's curtsy it up, and three. And two, that should do it. March them out. I'm going overhead with these sevens. I'm not proud. I could push more, but it's going to be plenty. 
Take a moment, breathe under that ball, squibble it around. Feet fairly close together again so you can lift them. Makes it easier to have your balance. I'm gonna try a little wider. All right, these are Arnold presses. Palms in, natural spiral, all the way up and together. Squeeze the deltoids at the top. Nice tall spine. Let those take a natural path that uses all of the shoulder complex muscles. Now let's lift the leg. Two. And one on that one. I'm going to try the other one. Exhale them up. Squeeze them up. This is so much more difficult than it looks. Keep squishing them as you like. Squeezing them. I'm so glad I don't have those 12s. Uh, keep them cooking, mixing them up. Long, tall spine, lengthen through that lumbar. Let's squeeze them up and hold them overhead at the top. All oh, the shoulders, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And melt them down. Super good. Hang out there on the ball for a minute. We're gonna roll out into the second chest press, same thing. We're gonna do more flies. I am switching to my 12s. That's a good weight. Get yourself out there, get your butt up, get your head comfortable, not too stretched. Turn on the pecs before you open them up. Turn them on and say, that's more pecs. And then open up into a very slight bend in that arm. Crush it right from the sternum to the armpit. Open them wide, feel that breath. Use your pecs like extra lungs. Breathe into them when they're open. Squeeze the air out of them when they're up. Extra squeeze, big cleavage. Inhale into it. Exhale it out. That's working great. If you want to get funky, you can try different elevations. Take those up at your ear elevation when they're out. Crush them from there. Maybe higher than the ears if that felt safe in your shoulders. Stay in the pecs. Can you stay in the pecs? Some of that's going to the shoulder. Don't let too much. And now bring them down to level with your shoulders again. There's my pecs, that's my pecs. Squeeze them at the top. Now bring them down towards your hips a tiny bit. Squeeze them up, squeeze them at the top. Two, one, and walk them up. That was heroic. All right, our last squat is a traditional vibrant meat and potatoes squat curl press, both bells. I'm gonna use the 12s. Now what I couldn't press on the ball, I can press standing up and squatting because I got my mobility. So. It's a four symbol, syllable thing, so you can follow it. I'm down with these by my face, I'm up overhead. Every time I'm down, they're by my face, this time they curl down. So it's a curl, and a press, and a pause, and a rest. Every time, pushing back into that posterior chain, checking your neutral spine at the top of the glute squeeze, melting down the hair, fight those biceps down, they are loving it. Curl. And press and pause and rest. We got four limbs working. We got the heart pumping. We got the life forces flowing. Squeeze them up. Where do you want to breathe? Breathe where you need to breathe. Maybe one more cycle. If we're lucky, we'll get to lock them overhead and stay there for a few. Squeeze your abs, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your shoulders. Super tall like a column. Victory to be sure. Back on the ball, one heavy bell, triceps. Now, if you don't have the over, overhead mojo range for this, triceps like that, you can do curls and presses. Curls and presses would be marvelous. Get yourself aligned, really look tall. Put this up over your head, elbows fairly close to your skull. Squeeze them up. Bring them way down deep. Pull the navel in, stabilize your spine. Kick them up. If you like, you can raise a leg as you do it. Squeeze the navel when you do that. Oh, can you groove the body mechanics going on here? Such a lot of amazing neural activity required to fire this complex, balance requiring, cross lateral, multi joint move, stability, mobility. Exhale them up, squeeze them, and squeeze them. It might not get any better than this. 
keep them burning. Your triceps will go until they don't, and then they just stop. You make that point, you get an extra bonus point for today. And we're gonna roll back on that ball for one more set of chest. Wow, the crowd goes wild. Set them in place, get them ready to go. Squeeze the bell, squeeze your pecs, walk it out. We're gonna incline it this time. So I arrive tall, get my head comfortable, although it's gonna come off because I'm dropping my bucket. I'm coming in on my upper pecs. I'm driving right from the sternum to the upper pecs, which attach to the collarbone, which is amazing. So you can feel that collarbone. Exhale them up. A little bit of abs fire. Try to do this up incline press without hardening any shoulder. Load it into those upper pecs. Marvelous muscular awareness and control. Open them out. Squeeze them up. Exhale. Oh, I'm still pressing with my little baby 12s. I'm going to try some flies. How about you? Fly them out. There's my pecs. Big and broad open heart. Squeeze that juice. Oh, so good for thoracic function. Opening that out like that. Squeezing through the pecs. Inhale out. You can even put a little sort of a mini W hinge on that because that pec will internally rotate that. Squeeze into the top. Squeeze. Four, three, two, one. Let's put them down slowly and stretch them out, out here. Feel that stretch, stretch, stretch. And then pump them down because we have done them all three times three twice. That's nine and nine. <clears throat> We've worked it all. Come on up. We'll do some stretching, some doo-wopping, and some closing. Really well done, team. Give these the ballistic stretch because they're certainly warmed up enough. On the ballistic stretch, I like the palms down when they're forward and forward when they're back. Letting them swing pretty easy, letting them pop. Ballistic stretches should not be done when you're cold. They're great when you're warm, which you are. We're gonna grab these behind our back. Drive the shoulders down, put the chest out. Go ahead and arch your back if you want. Pull your head back. Feel it open those hands into external rotation if you can do it. Feel that stretch across the upper pecs. This is an amazing, always available upper body uncurl yourself stretch because the whole world is trying to get us to go the other way and this is anti-curl, anti-collapse. And let them sway. Shh, I'm glad I found you, but you need to be quiet now. Let them swing a little bit more. And let's get that back stretch with the yoga. Shoulders swinging like this. Drop them down. Feel that not just in the shoulders, but all the way into the mid back. Let's take those up and down twice. And then we're gonna do the mid back stretch, which is a great secret. I've got the left arm underneath. I'm gonna turn slightly to my left and drive those elbows forward and push the dome of my back into that shirt and that skin and exhale, stretch it, and inhale, stretch it, and bring them up. That is another magic, always available stretch. Boing them and switch the other one in. Take them up and down twice. See how they like that. Feel where you feel that. And then rotate away, pushing around. Oh, the first time I did that, I thought I had never stretched those muscles like that before in my life. So good. Oh, that was probably 10 years ago. Let them swing. That feels so good. Let's do the leg swings for dynamic balance and loosen up those hips. I'm going to drill my left leg deep into the earth like a root tree, set up like I'm doing a handshake, and let those swing. Now, if you're not ready for the swing, you go touch and touch and then let them swing nice and easy. Watch the alternate movement on the swinging side while the left hand mimics the left leg. Eyes out there for balance. Let it swing easily and big for four more, three more, two more, and one more. See if you can control that set down, transfer, sink it into the earth, set it up the other way. Let it swing, loosey goosey hips. Whew. Four, three, Two and one. Let's get the other two of them. They just get cooler and cooler. Sink into your first leg, fence post into the earth. 
uh, opposite movement. Hands are going opposite the leg. That's my check for balance. If I got it, I can really let it whip. Once again, we're crossing the center line for brain health and general funky fun. Go for four, three. There's that ITB. Can you feel it? One total control. Bring it around. Park it down. Rise it out of this leg. Sink it into that leg. Set it. Check it. Let it swing. Bada bada. Super easy, super tall, almost effortless, but full of style. We got a four, and a three, and a two, and a one. Bring it around, park it down. Here's the tricky one. I sink into that left. I wrap the right one all the way around it. I wrap the arms the other way. This is a rotational leg swing. I can check it and hold my balance there. Once I got it, I can just let them easily go these are generally difficult at first all three of these but if you stay with them you'll master them and you'll have a much more acute dynamic balance system let's count it three and two and one and if you almost wipe out that's really good for you too sink into that leg wrap it around counter wrap it and let them swing yeah that is just working. Let them wind down after four more, three more, two more, and one. See if you still got that balance. Park it down, sink it back into the earth like we started, plug in, exhale down, draw that chi energy up. Feel yourself centered and aligned. Really amazing. Hope you guys like that. I sure did. More to come.